Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this multi-part screencast series, I'm showing you how Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse, or OEPE for short, provides extensive tooling around Java E6 and Glassfish. So far, we have seen how OEPE allows you to download, install, and configure Glassfish very easily. Second part showed how to create a very simple Java E6 application using JSP, Servlets, and Enterprise Java Beans. This part, we're going to show how to retrieve some values from a database table using Java Persistence API 2 and display the values in your servlet. Let's get started. So for that, let's go to our IDE. Now this is the application that we have built so far. As mentioned earlier, in the Data Source Explorer, you have this sample Java DB database that has a predefined JDBC resource in Glassfish. So we're going to use that. Let's um, start our database for that first. So go to our command line. This is the directory where Glassfish was installed for us. And I'm going to fire the start database command. This starts the database for me. Now I can go back to my IDE, right click here, and say connect. So this connects to my database. Now in order to do some database functionality, I can go to the database perspective. So window, other, and choose database development. Now we are in database development perspective. Um, I can expand this. I can look at the different schemas over here. I can look at the app schema here. And I can look at the tables in here. There are no tables defined over here. So I'm going to open up my uh, MySQL uh, scrapbook select the schema here and I'm going to borrow a table definition code from my notebook. So this is my table definition. Let me borrow it. So copy the code here and paste it here. It's a simple table with two columns, name and password. They're both varchar 30, both not null and name is the primary key. So let's uh, fire that um, query. And you can see uh, the query succeeded. So now if I go to my schema and I refresh it, I look at the tables and here my table is being shown correctly. So I can now right click on the table and say data and I can say edit. So it shows me a grid where I can start adding my data. So let's say I say name one, pass one. And I add name two and I say pass two. Name three, pass three. So I added basically three rows over here. Um, let's delete this one. All right, and now let's save it. And you say yes. It basically shows you the MySQL query that is being generated to insert the data into the table. So now our table is created, data is populated. Now we're ready to roll and let's um, retrieve these values in our servlet. So for that, uh, we're going to switch to our Java EE perspective. Window, open perspective, other, Java EE. We're over here. Let's close these panes as we no longer need them. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click here, say JPA tools, or actually before that, I'm going to say properties. I'm going to search for facets and I'm going to enable JPA facet here. I can click on further configuration. I'm going to choose Eclipse 2.0.x as the platform provider, disable library configuration, and choose my sample JavaDB database. And then I'm going to create or uh, click on OK and click on OK one more time. So this generates my persistence.xml, which I can show you here. If I expand it, you can look at persistence.xml over here. I can look at my connection, and here I can specify the default JDBC name that exists in Glassfish um, that corresponds to our uh, Synapse samples uh, database. So once I do that, I save the file here, go to my source, and I can say my JTA data source is already added over here. So let's close persistence.xml as well. And now let's generate our JPA entities. So go to JPA tools, generate entities from tables. 
And as you can see, our table is very much present over here. Click on next. No table associations to worry about for now. Um, take all the defaults. Um, let's say we specify the package name as model since we are generating the corresponding Java model. Go to next. And I can, if I want, I can change the class name here from my user to be more conformant with the Java naming conventions. And then click on finish. So now if I look at my model, I can see my my user class here. This is a very simple Pojo class and I'll just add entity annotation and add ID annotation denoting this is a private this is a primary key. And now let's go back to our servlet and in my servlet I can inject a persistence unit and that gives me a entity manager factory. And if I expand my servlet code, let's resolve the imports here. First one, and then the second one. And down in my do get method, I can say from the entity manager factory, give me a entity manager. And as you can see, the code completion and the entire Java docs and all those things are very integrated experience, giving you a very nice overall experience with the IDE itself. So you create entity manager, then you create a query and you specify your query as select u from my user u and then you say execute this query and get me the result list and then you can say get me the zeroth element from the list this I know is a my user and I'm going to cast it as well and let's resolve the imports over here And then in here, I'm going to display the value here saying username and user dot get name. And finally, I'm going to put my closing h2 tag here and the semicolon. So let's save the file over here. As you can see, the publishing to Glassfish happened automatically right there itself. Go to my browser output, refresh. And here is our username uh, name one tag. Um, for some reason, it's not coming in our h2 tag. Well, because we did not put the starting h2 tag here. So let's put a starting h2 tag. Go down here and refresh and bingo. So in very few steps, you were able to retrieve the data from a database, read the values and display it in your servlet. Now, this is only proof of concept that this is how things work. You can definitely expand this to other technologies. Finally, let me leave you with some uh, references. You can download Glassfish from glassfish.org. Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse can be downloaded from this Oracle Technology Network website. You can ask any questions around Glassfish on this Glassfish forum. And we definitely encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Glassfish Handle. Thank you.